with today's stream. So, hello everybody. Everybody who's uh, back from last time. Everybody who is new. Everybody who joined uh, now from the webinar I had uh, 10 minutes ago about our new Spec for Plus Living Doc uh, generator um, product. Happy to see you here. Um, topic of today, we have only had today a short stream, an hour, is continue working on our uh, community content submission application, what we started last last week, um, where we had the first tests uh, executing, not all, all failing, uh, not all passing. So, um, I was asked in the webinar how to configure um, Azure DevOps, uh, the Spec for Plus Living Talk Azure DevOps uh, extension, and uh, we wanted to do a CI build for this at all. So um, let's let's start with creating a CI build for this, and then integrate there also Azure Dev, the Spec for Plus Living Talk Azure DevOps. Um, so what's what's cool um, here in our uh, Spectral project on Azure DevOps, uh, um, the sources currently are on GitHub, so we need to connect uh, GitHub and Azure DevOps, and that's that's really easy. Uh, let's create a new project here for our uh, streaming projects. Let's put everything there, and what you can do is you can make it public. Um, the project public so everybody can have a look at uh, your builds and uh, on builds and releases on the, on the state. This is very really nice for open source project that also contributor can see uh, that they don't have access to Azure DevOps can see the um, results of the builds. Uh, we want Git as version control and we take the normal HL. Um, Work at the process doesn't matter for our case. So let's quickly create this project. If there are questions, please uh, ask them in the chat. I will monitor uh, them and try to answer as, as quickly as possible. So project is created. So the first thing, so for uh, CI pipeline, we go to pipelines, create the pipeline. Then you can here try to connect this. We want GitHub. Uh, let's hope this works. Uh, we should see now all the repositories. And when we search here for a streaming project, it doesn't work. Let's make a connection to GitHub. And and we see it here. Specific connection now. We want to use an existing. <laughs> ah, my repositories, all repositories. Yeah, there it is. All. Uh, then we can't say which which um, pipeline we want. Uh, we have uh, ASP.NET pipelines, start with this classic one. And this creates us nice YAML file with all the configurations. So what's happened here? First, uh, the name, let's um, rename this to um, community contribution. Uh, Community contribution submission. Then let's make it dash CI. So it's triggered on the master build. We have do we have we have but we have a main build. We have a main build as our default main is the default um, branch name. Um, Did we, did we use the wrong, did I use the wrong pipeline? Let's, let's cancel this. I'm irritated. This is ASP.NET. ASP.NET 
and not ASP.NET Core. So all repositories streaming. That's double, okay. ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core. .NET Framework, show more, is there no? A search would be nice. And let's take this and adjust this, okay. So again, let's change the name. Fusion Submission CI. It's main. We're running on Windows Latents. We build our solution, all our solution file. Let's not build every solution file. Only build this one. We take the path from here. Any CPU release, and then we have steps. The NuGet tool installer. That NuGet is installed. Then let's make a restore of the solution. Then we build it. We don't what, what, what we don't also don't need this web publish package a single file skip. We yeah, this is all all um for ASP.NET publishing we don't need that. But from configuration, then we run a VS test with that. So, and when we say now save and run, commit directly, um, this should now, if it's finished, yeah, trigger the first build. And here on GitHub, you should have here a new commit um, with our YAML file. So let's go back here to our CI pipeline, and you can let's let's see what's doing. So it's making checkout, installing uh, NuGet, NuGet X, and now doing the restore. Restore and yeah, NuGet restore always takes time. <laughs> so, um yeah, that's uh, the boring part on this. So let's let's get here already. Where is the Team Explorer? Team Explorer. Let's. Uh, sync. Sync. Don't need to push the current branch, you only need to download the existing one. What we can do, so we have now in uh, ah, we have in the in, in top is the YAML file, we didn't change the folder, but this is okay. Let's add here a, a solution folder and link this uh, existing item to it that we have it in the solution. So uh, let's see. Yeah, NuGet restore is finished. So we uh, the build of the project runs now. Um, yeah. Um, what the nice is uh, with this public projects in Azure DevOps, you get free build agents from Microsoft for open source projects. And with this public uh, project, you get, uh, I think, 10 build agents with unlimited time to run your tests. And 
you're running our tests. So let's see if our Selenium tests work. So it's here green. So quickly, why it's here green? <laughs> um, because there were no tests available to find. Um, because, because, when we have a look at here, um, our file, our, our, our assembly is not, our specs assembly is not here. And the reason for this is, let's go back to the pipeline. Um, the VS test task. So let's search for the VS test task here on the, on the side. The problem is, is that in the default values, it only looks at files that includes the test deal, test in the name. We don't have test in the name, and so it doesn't find it. So we need to adjust this a little bit. Um, I always like, because there are so many files here, when you, um, let's have a quick look back. Uh, there are a lot of files in the log here um, that have test test in the name. So VS test is looking at a lot of tests um, and a lot of assemblies is their test. So what I'd always like to do is adjust this as exactly as possible. So we say community DLL, the rest can, yeah, uh, the test adapter we can remove, that's not needed. What's important is, is this uh, object folder, so everything in the object folder is included, excluded. Um, Support smart lines of min match patterns, so good. Working directory looks good, results is also good. Uh, we take the latest version, so we have no settings file. Um, dun, 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 dun. Looks, upload test attachments, good. And now what you can do is you place your cursor where you want and when you say it add, it, 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 with what we entered here, it fills out here the, adds here the task to the YAML so you don't have to uh, write this on ourselves. So let's save it again. Probably we could do better commit messages. And let's have it back to the pipeline. Uh, and there is here the second started. So again, if you have questions, please ask them in the chat and I will, I will uh, try to answer them as quickly as possible. Also, um, if you subscribe, uh, follow us on Twitch, um, you get notifications when we when I start next week the next stream. And um, all of so recording of of last week is already on YouTube. So um, go spec for org um, YouTube no, YouTube. And we have here already the, the recording of, of last week. We have also other, other uh, videos here. And I've created also a playlist with all the, all the videos for this, this streaming session. So from this uh, uh, session, uh, when we work on this, this ASP.NET Core application. So, and again, we are at the Nougat Restore. Um, that's the, ah, that was quick. Okay, now we have built. Building is probably quicker than the Nougat Restore. And Then let's see if, we, if the tests are executed on, on the build agent. 
They should, so they changed it some months ago. They are interactive, the build agents, so you can start a browser there with Selenium. So, let's see, we have our specs project is executed. Activation and completed the runner runs and starting Chrome driver. Cool. Succeeded on thread zero. Hi, our first first uh, scenarios are are succeeded, and the next one succeeded on. Let's see, and we have email not implemented. Yes. Yes, we have five five scenarios. Uh, two failed. Uh, uh, here, so let's go to tests. Yes, we have five scenarios, three passed, two failed. The same we have locally. Cool, our CI pipeline uh, works. So, at uh, this was the hard part <laughs> to get Living Doc um, installed. So, when you have here in Spectral Plus Living Doc, yeah, also this, this CI build was the easiest one. Um, Configure and spec for those living dog is easy. Um, the the it's not the best uh, onboarding onboarding yet. Um, integrated better is it's in the documentation on doc spec for org. We have spec for plus living doc, and we have here uh, in the Azure test so spec for plus living doc documentation is for spec for living doc for Azure DevOps and also for the spec for living doc generator and we have here and uh, configure the build step in yammer the documentation of it and we have here the uh, sample already our our recommendation is to have a separate uh, a separate build only for um, creating the the, the, the generation uh, the, the Living doc. Um, so first, let's rename this here. I want to rename. Where did they hide the rename? Settings? No. Rename move. So, spec flow. So streaming project, so let's make a um, community, so we can create, can you create here folders? Uh, no, we, we simply write it. So uh, community uh, content submission is the folder and this is the CI. So when you have here all our pipelines, all we have the folder and CI, and can we say new pipeline here? In that case, we have still GitHub with Yammer. Again, the repository. Configure your title. And this time we want a minimalistic pipeline. And show assistant. Ah, oh, this is this. And this is the so that file names are correct. Same. It's Community contribution submission uh, living doc. And it's again the main. Um, you, this Ubuntu latest is okay. And here we can remove the steps. And let's copy from the documentation this part here, this task. So um, we have here the task. Oh tasks um spec for 
or you could yeah you have again also for the task here um, the configuration values so um, let's let's uh, this is the task and that's okay spec flow plus uh, living documentation generation input so here are the paths where the feature files are um, let's go back to github um, streaming projects page the specs features let's take here this path no ah to my to less selected project name is the community content submission page project language is English work item prefix you don't have you can remove this enable is true continuous error condition always time out in minutes so save and run set up spec flow plus Living dog Azure Dev Ops. Save and run. So, one thing I forgot to mention is how do you get to this build task for Azure, for for and how you get to this menu point. So for that you have to install an extension to your Azure DevOps, Azure DevOps Server. TFS and you do this via the marketplace. Select here Azure DevOps, search for SpecFlow. Uh, then you find the SpecFlow plus Living Doc um, extension. You can some all the features again displays. You press get it free. Then some identities. Uh, you have to log in comes, and then you can. Um, Yeah, take some while. Yeah, you get to this. You can select your Azure DevOps organization where you want to install it and then install it after that. Or if you don't have the permissions, you can request uh, from your administrator that it's installed. And when it is done, uh, the next time you go here, you have Spec for Plus Living Doc here. So, our build was successful. Task went through, went through. Let's have a look. Spec for plus living doc. We should now see you see um, see it. Yeah, and there we have it. So we have here our repository uh, selector, uh, branch selector. We don't have have this, and here we have our one feature file with with here. Um, Done. So, uh, 24 minutes configuring CI build and uh, spec for Blast Living Doc Azure DevOps uh, build, and you have it here. So, that's that's really really easy. Cool. Big 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 step. So, um, that's nice. We have a working CI system. So let's uh, pull the changes. Uh, yes, save. Let's also add the second um, YAML file here in the solution and let's commit this also. Add CI Yammers to solution. Cool. Cool. Big, big, big step. Done. So, um, yeah, then let's, let's, um, continue with, um, 
this with our project. So let's first let's have a quick look if we need to update some packages. I think we released a we released a new runner runner version. And we don't have do we have wrong project? Ah, uh, we don't have yet. Okay, let's let's also tr uh, try to get uh, spec for plus living doc uh, running locally. So again, uh, it's really easy to to add it to a pro project um, spec for project. So you search for living doc. You have to spec for plus living doc plugin and install it. To your project. Um, conflicted version detected. Um, we have ah, we have a two old. Okay, we need to first update our our runner. Uh, we are still using three three. Then we need to install the latest runner version. Um, which also puts us. I didn't notice that we're using an old, not the latest spec for version, but now we have this and now we can upgrade this and now we can install the plugin. Ah. Okay, we have here a small warning uh, because of um, NuGet uh, package uh, dependency policies. Um, we need to that to get it doing the same. It, it rings the, the right one, uh, but I don't want this um, error. So we need to install to fix this the spec flow tools MS build uh, version and that we used also the latest and when we now rebuild this which, which one update is there still missing ah we can also update it so let's up rebuild all it was successful let's also update the test platform Cool, everything here. So again, make a quick rebuild. And then let's execute the, the tests locally. So discovery is running, let's run them. Yeah, and it's starting, still starting. Cool, still working. And then we have now a look at the output folder. We are in the bin debug, net core. We have now here a feature data JSON. This is the data for the spec for plus living doc generator uh, repo database. And when we now open here a shell and say a living doc Feature data JSON. Um, it generates the living doc HTML. Uh, what you saw it's a it's a it's a shortcut I installed to quickly or up uh, open my terminal here. I'm using the new Microsoft terminal, Windows terminal, Windows terminal, uh, which is really nice. And now yeah, we have now the living doc HTML, and when we open this, is we have our uh, generated uh, uh, living documentation and we have here the one green scenario and the one scenario outlook which is red with our two passing steps and and the, the green the, the red ones 
model not yet implemented. So, cool. So let's let's um, uh, update nougat packages and add backflow plus living dog generator plugin. Let's commit this and also uh, push them on the server that the CI can also um, build it in, in the meantime. Cool. Uh, we are fast. We are, we are running through stuff. Um, one thing I would like to do today is also um, let's let's make a little bit our our page a little bit pretty. If you can't remember from the last time, um, <laughs> our labels and fields are are not that 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 cool and. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but what? Yes, we are using the. Uh, this templates have Bootstrap included. Um, which version of Bootstrap? Four three one. Cool. Um. So uh, let's let's try to make it a little bit nicer um, layout. Examples. No, this is all. Is there something we cut? Nav bars. Sticky food uh, check out. Form controls. Uh, that's that's cool. How do I see the? I would like to see the code. Pictures. Uh, <laughs> Uh, da, 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 da. So we have that's not the best one. So let's go back to here. No. Documentation. So um content no components forms forms ha that's that's what we like. Let's let's try to make this like this. So we have a form and everything. Let's copy this and adjust it to our needs. So for that we go on to into the view um, index where we have our our existing uh, entry box and let's get the stuff here. So we have our submit button. And then we have here groups and uh, let's let's put this the example exact with an email with some text underword password and so this is nice so uh, password we don't need um, the checkbox no also not yet at the moment so make this here so. We have a, a HTML label for this ID. So this is, let's, we have here our URL. So we have here URL and this is the label. And this is not URL, this is our display name for, this is here and this is our with ID for that. And then we have here our input type. And what we can do now also is we have here ID with text URL. And this is input for that. And what we can also say here is add class 
equals form control and email have it's not an email address so let's um, comment this out and then we have small id so let's also remove that we don't have this yet and also this one so theoretically when we start our application now is that we have something nice well the content nice looks it's, it's still above but it looks very very much better cool and and now and and so we can remove this and and now we can now we can uh, move the type here so let's uh, let's remove this all and and we need this one this is for No, 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 no. So this is for type. And we have tux type. And this is also for type. And tux type. And this is, yeah, label four from control. Nice. Nice type of content. All the content looks much better. So then let's remove our old stuff and nice. Good. And if it's true, our the same scenarios are still uh, green. Okay, one pass, four failing. That's interesting. So which one is, is now failing? What did we break? Ah, we break, break, broke all of them. Because our diff is correct anymore. Solution, what did we change? Changes. Let's have a compare. Um... What what part of the test doesn't? Okay, thank you, Visual Studio. Um, type verb element not to be null, so it can't find the type verb web element and probably also not the URL web element. So how do we get this? Let's have a look in our page object. So, well, web element, we search on the web element and then we, yeah, and that's, uh, yeah, we, we had this div and he had an ID and we forgot to move these IDs and without them, we couldn't cannot find them so let's run run them again so yeah this is something page object doesn't help you if you <laughs> don't uh, change it correctly it's, it will break but we quickly found out why it was not working 
And cool. Email not description not implemented. Nice. And it looks nice. So next check-in. Um use bootstrap to make form pretty. <laughs> So, let's have a quick look. Did our builds run through? Oh, our CI failed. Why did our CI failed? Ah, yeah, it's, it's failed. It's, yeah, because the two are still failing. Nice. So, so we, are, we are far. 10 minutes. 10 minutes already, and we, we it's, it's fast. So, now we made the... Uh, we made the uh, uh, UI pretty, and let's let's now make also our page object pretty. This is this is not nice. I have no line numbers. So how many lines are these? Line numbers. Text it to the general. C sharp. I want line numbers. Number, number, all languages, line numbers. So, uh, for these so these little elements, it's 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 too much, too much code. So, and perhaps you notice this: we have here a pattern, and we can use this. We always have for every form we have this one div, we set an ID, and then we have a label, and then we have a text box. And we can use her the hierarchical find element, find elements uh, stuff again, but a lot of better. In case, and what we're doing is we make a page object for only a part of the DOM. So we make, make a page object for this, which has is the same page object with this, and then we can uh, work it together so let's let's uh, show you in code what I mean so make a console don't want to add kubernetes new class so um, this is the input input entry page object what our int uh, input entry page object has so we have a property. We have the I web element, the label web element, and we have the um, value web element. These two, and they are have no setup. The, these two and we have itself we have itself um, uh, yeah that we have so and how do we want to use this so let's, let's split this you see this side by side and I have to, to jump less more and, and so we have this input web element so um, So what what we get from this input entry page object is we get we get we get we get we get what do we get we get the web uh, we get a web element this is our parent div this is this div and do we get the uh, now we have parent if this is this is enough so let's let's um, save this in a field and what we can do now is we can change this to a lambda parent if find web element by 
so and now I go by and we have now we don't need what we can do is by tag name because this is always a label so I make this a little bit this is always a label here and we can do the same here with parent div find element by tag name and this is always an input this is this label and that label this is this label and this this will be get an input and this is this and so we can now um, we can remove here this, this, this ID and also this ID, we don't need this anymore. And yay! So, and what we can do now on this submission web element, so we can, let's put it here. So what we can do is, um, um, we have now, what we have now is, we have a public input entry page object for the URL, input entry, get, and we have the same for the type. So, uh, how do we get this? Um, we need, 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 yeah, we need, um, so this is our whole page, so we need to go from top to bottom, what we need is we need this form, so first we need public i web element the form, and this is again the web driver driver web driver find element and here we can again say by tag name because this is a form so nice so we have the form and then what we can do is we can make an uh, a, a numerable of uh, input entry page objects and this is our input entries and this is we search in the form find elements by so all of the emails has this form dash group in it so by this is a class name by class name form dash group we get them all and now we can use link to select uh, to pro project this in this collection. So see what I do here is simply I find all elements by class name and then I convert them to a new input entry page object. So what does this doesn't that's acceptable? Um, Mm, what? Ah, this is public ads again. Um, public class. <laughs> nice. And so we have it here. And what we can do now is uh, go make with link also on input entries. We filter here where e dot and what we need now is is we need to differentiate them so we can use um, what we can use is we want in this case we want to use this URL so we need this ID so we need from the parent if the, the ID so we don't want to make it accessible com completely so public string id is parent div i 
parent if get attribute id and now we can i i want id uh, equals url and this is the single 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 there is only one available here and we can make the same for the type So, then we have to our two entries. Nice, 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 nice. And so, and what we need now is we need, let's adjust the existing um, stuff. So we have here the URL web element and we can remove, make this really quickly because we can also return URL element. And in that case, is a uh, uh, no will will input entry, and in that case, is the value web element, and the same here for uh, yeah, it um, will label will. Web element no. will input entry label element and we can so expression bodies expression bodies the same here but let's uh, <laughs> Yeah, we forgot to do this here. So what we can do is we make, make let's make out of this. Ah, okay, I have no reshop installed. Uh, quick action extract method. Um, try find element. And we put Ah, we can't do this here. No, this doesn't work. Okay, we need to find another way to find make this try find element different. But here we can say type web element is is now the type input entry. That's the value web element, and also. That's the type input entry label web element. So, um, better, um, not perfect, but what you see, we don't need these two anymore. They are no use anymore. And but we, it's it's we, we we start getting in a one screen. Let's let's see if everything is still working. So. And same test of failing. And now you see the power of page object model. We, we change the structure of our HTML and we changed only, only our page object. We did not change any line, any line in our bindings, anything in our, our stuff around. Only in the page object, and it's it's again working. Uh, so no, that that's that's the cool stuff on on the page object. Cool. And what we could do is probably could could um, make this stuff easier. So this type web element is only uh, this is used. Um, this is also used, but this URL, this is ne never used. So we can remove 
this. Uh, your label uh, should be okay. Um, we could we could probably make this make this still less less cold. Uh, we have here um, the one thing um, what we now lost is is to check if it's if it's there at all. Um, let's see what's happening if we um, comment these out and let them run. Let's see what's what's how it is failing. So let's only run the URL test. So, uh, okay, it's failing with not a nice, nice stuff. It's failing with sequence contains no elements. Um, it's failing. Here, we have input entries. We don't have any entry entries and they're the single, single um, uh, throws an exception. Uh, and what we can do now here is um try get we encapsulate this input entry um what we make is um make here a method we say here it's singer or default so this is null this can be null and we say if input um, equal uh, is now then we throw new not found exception has this an overload with a message nice if not we make a return of the input entry so the question is we could make this even nice we make input entries and f this url so let's let's put some of this stuff into the oh, we have it as a state so we only we could change this completely so make this as url as parameter so we don't need this string id and then we can say var equals oh, then we need a semicolon and then we can here make a nice uh, error message input entry for id was not found and we need to change this to id uh, and then we can also use the same method for the type let's put this uh, at the end this method so what we have here is a track at input entry with the id and what it does is we look in same before we look into it if we find it it's single or default so if it finds one entry and one entry this is the entry and then return it if it is null we throw an exception so let's run this again and then let's quickly fix it and then uh, time is already up for today's stream so title is still working <laughs> so and we get here input entry for rule was not found input entry for type was not found and these are the not implemented like we wanted it so we can Add this again, build 
and run it. And again, what should be? So nice. Everything is working again, but it's pretty. <laughs> uh, what you can want more? Let's open here. So nice, or at least better than before. Good. Uh, let's uh, push this up. Like the page objects and then this was it for today um, thanks for joining I hope I see you uh, next week again next week we have full two, two hours again um, from 1 p.m. to, to 3 p.m. Um, topic will be only have this this form let's let's try to submit something back to back to the server and also try to perhaps uh, mock some database um, or yeah mock some database have some database where we can store the submissions and test this also so wish you all a happy uh, rest of your day and see you next week bye <laughs>